video. Uh, today we're doing two NBA player props here on Prize Picks for Tuesday, October 31st. We have a three-game slate here: uh, Knicks, Cavs, Spurs, Suns, and Orlando versus the Clippers. Not a great slate overall. Um, before I get started, you guys take a look in the description below. You can hop into the premium Discord. Nine dollars and thirty cents per month, thirty-one cents per day. Where I post all the plays I'm making on Prize Picks. We also have some other premium cappers in there as well. I post all of their plays, research, and analysis, and they've been hitting crazy lately. Super positive community. Everyone in there really just trying to help each other cash. Everyone, all the members posting their slips, their thoughts, their research on the plays they're making. Yeah, nonetheless, positive, positive community in there. Um, I also need to mention I'm not a gambling expert, and this is not financial advice. Simply plays I'm personally looking at making. Hopefully, give you guys some insight and analysis to then make your own player prop decisions. Again, no one's pressing submit on those parlays other than yourselves. Uh, I don't think anyone should be blindly tailing anyone. Um, again, it's your own money. Anyways, I have a few things to talk about before I get into the video. Uh, for the longest time, people had been leaving comments on my videos talking about my mic was too low. Uh, I got a new mic, and now everyone's saying my mic is too loud, and wh why is it too loud? They, I heard their eardrums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm definitely trying to find um, a happy medium as far as the mic volume goes. So again, bear with me, and I do apologize if it's too loud, and I apologize previously if the mic was too low. Um, again, trying to find the right sort of volume to make everyone happy here. Um, but yeah enough talking let's just get into these plays both these plays are um i guess some i don't, I don't want to call them fun because i don't know if that's the right word but for these matchups again only a three game slate i would say bet lightly in general um three game slates you should not be betting crazy amounts of money um, regardless but the first play here is going to be a fantasy score it's gonna be donovan mitchell uh, at 47 and a half the last two games for donovan i think First game of the year, I think this was at 48 and a half or 49. And the last game, it was at 50 and a half. We get him here at 47 and a half um, in a primetime national TV game at home versus the Knicks. We know Darius Garland is not playing and we know um, Jared Allen is out. So we know Donovan Mitchell usage is going to be th through the roof. He's currently questionable for this game, um, but he's obviously going to play in this one. I think he participated in the shoot around this morning. And again, the usage for Donovan Mitchell is going to be sky high so we take a look at on outlier again there's a link in the description below you can get a seven day free trial with outlier it is a research tool that i use every single day we just take a look at some odds here that attribute to fantasy score donovan mitchell over one and a half steals plus blocks he's minus 160 to have at least two stocks in this game right that obviously attributes heavily heavily to our fantasy score line right we come down here he's currently if we take a look on the over minus 115 to go over 42 and a half pra in his last 10 games, he's over this line in five of his last 10. We go to head-to-head. -head, he's had, again, this is kind of really since joining the Cleveland Cavs. He's had pretty good games, 51-51, both at home versus the Knicks, 32-34-20, and then 40 PRA. Again, PRA, I would say, attributes pretty heavily to um, fantasy score here. But for Donovan Mitchell, again, mind you, this game is probably going to be the closest game out of any of the games tonight. We got Spurs, Phoenix, and then Orlando Clippers. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Clippers depth chart, you know, after the trade that they made yesterday for James Harden. But a 214 over under, uh, three and a half point spread here. The Knicks are actually favorites in this one, so we can expect Donovan Mitchell to, you know, just get a ton of run. His fantasy game, fantasy score game log with the with, versus the Knicks with the Cleveland Cavs. So he's played them in four games, mind you. You know, Donovan grew up a Knicks fan. What's been, you know, pretty pretty heavily noted that he wants to go to the Knicks at some point in his career. He's hit the over on this line in three games. In both games, he hit the over on this at home. So he had he's had 64.6 fantasy, 35.3, 60.6, and 53.3. So okay, let's just do this for, with Cleveland, actually. Let's make this easier to look at. So we look at with Cleveland, with the Cavs. I don't know why it's not populating stat muse anyways you guys can see these four games here 64 60 and 53 are his three overs and he's played massive minutes in all four of those games so we know he kind of has matched up well versus the knicks obviously this is last season but then we look at donovan mitchell his fantasy score game like this year right he's on the over this line in both games this season with 57 and 70.1 fantasy he finished at brooklyn on the road 57 fantasy played 36 minutes 27 5 6 4 and 1 again steals and blocks he's had Five steals and blocks through two games, which again helps his uh, fantasy score line tremendously. Has taken 20 plus field goal attempts, 10 plus three point attempts, gotten to the free throw line a little bit, definitely in that game against OKC. 
Um, and then the, even in that game against Brooklyn, had zero turnovers, which is pretty amazing and obviously helps his fantasy score line game as well. But we look at Donovan Mitchell, his fantasy score game log without Darius Garland. This is the key here. Without Darius Garland, right? He's over this line in one, two, three, four, five, six of 10 games, right? One game coming um, when he finished with 46.3 fantasy. So he's over this line in six of 10 games without Darius Garland. Obviously one game, even without the Knicks, the same exact scenario, or sorry, versus the Knicks without Darius Garland, 64.6, 38, three and 12, one steal, two blocks, four turnovers, 64.6 fantasy. All we need is 47.6 tonight. So he obviously gets a ton of usage uh, without Darius Garland. He becomes kind of the point guard. We look at player usage, right? USG percentage. And Donovan Mitchell here is at 31.2% USG, which again is down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th highest. But he's the only guy here that's played two games. Like all these players around him have played three games, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. I mean, all these guys above him, as far as USG goes, have played 3, 4, 4, 3, 3, 4, 4, 3. So at 31.2, he's seeing massive, massive usage, you guys. Field goal attempts. He's up there as well as far as field goal attempt percentage compared to other players. He's only played two games, you guys, and it smashed the over on both of these lines um, so far this season. Like, pretty easily. For 57, like, all we need is 47.6 tonight. We're talking about 10 less fantasy points here for Donovan Mitchell. You could take even away three steals to give him one less steal, give him three less steals in this matchup, and he hits the over on this line. Now, we take a look at fantasy points per minute, which is something I do like to look at as well. On the season, Donovan, 1.21 fantasy points per minute. If he plays around 38 plus minutes tonight, that should put him at around 46 fantasy points based on his per minute average, which again, we're taking the over on it. I like Donovan Mitchell. I think it's easily the, I guess, most fun play is there. I'm going to say it. The most fun play to play tonight um, as far as just watching the game. Like he's going to play 38, 40 maybe minutes, um, have the ball in his hands a ton. So just a ton of opportunity here for his fantasy score line. If we get it at a three point discount from what this line was. Um, just the last game he played. So Donovan Mitchell with 47.5 fantasy is the first play. Second play is going to be a first half play. It's going to be PRA. It's going to be Nurkic over 13.5. Um, I like Nurkic for a variety of reasons. One, I mean, Beal's out, Booker's out. So a lot of playmaking lands on his shoulders. We look at his first half PRA game log this season. Um, I think it's a little bit skewed. He's obviously been in some crazy foul trouble. He finished with 24 PRA in the first half against Golden State when he finished with no fouls in the first half. 24 PRA. Um, against the Lakers, finished with 12 PRA, had four personal fouls in the first half. And then against Utah, 11 PRA, finished with three personal fouls in the first half. So again, those two less minutes that he got, or actually he played 15 minutes, which I think is what he's probably good for, at least 15, 16 plus minutes in the first half without foul trouble. He played 12 and got 12 PRA, played 13 and got 11 PRA. So, you you know, in both these games here, if he can get those two, three and two more minutes in these games, I definitely think he gets to 14 PRA. Just given how much usage he has in the offense without um, Devin Booker and, and Bradley Beal. And I think he's actually leading the league in, in dribble handoff assists, which, again, they feed him in the post. Players come around, they wrap around, dribble handoff for a shot. They they run a ton of offense through Justin Nurkic if you watch the games, right? Um, so, But his PRI game log last season, he faced the Spurs, his most recent game versus the Spurs, right? 25 PRA in the first half, 16 7 and 2 in 15 minutes. In that game, I mean, there's obviously no Wimby last season, but it was Jakob Podol, who you could consider is pretty solid defensive center. And then Zach Collins, right, who's on the cent who's the center now for the Spurs. And Nurkic absolutely cooked them full game and finished with 25, 11, and 7 in 27 minutes, right? We look at Nurkic and some, and some odds that help him here. Again, outlier, link in the description below, a great research tool. Current first quarter, guys, this is just first quarter. Over 0.5 assists in the first quarter, minus 224. Over two and a half first quarter rebounds, minus 163. Over three and a half first quarter points, minus 145. And look at the opponent rank, 29th, 26th, and 30th. That's what the Spurs rank against opponents in allowing these stats in the first quarter. Okay, so look at these odds. So he's essentially good, or these odds are heavily, heavily favored for at least one assist in the first quarter, three rebounds, and four points. One, three, that, that is, what is that, seven? Seven PRA that they're essentially giving him potentially in the first quarter, heavily, heavily favored. Now, we look at some other centers first half PRA game log this season versus Spurs. We saw Derek Lively, who came off the bench in this game, finish with eight PRA. Zubots finished with 13 in 12 minutes and had no assists. We know Nurkic is good for at least one assist given the odds here. Minus 224, and I, I mean, he, he's going to get an assist in the first quarter. And then Sangoon had 16 PRA, five, eight, and three, um, two for six in 17 minutes. So Nurkic and Sangoon, very, very similar players um, offensively 
you know, you could definitely say that if you know ball. Um, we look at centers, points plus, rebounds, uh, plus as, points plus rebounds plus assists, game lock, full game, right, versus the Spurs this season. And, again, you could pivot and take full game PRA. But, I mean, Zubat finished with 24, Lively finished with 27, and Sangoon finished with 46. So, you know, you compare first game, first half and, you know, second half, obviously, game scripts, player usage, roles, and things like that change so so quickly. And um, they change team to team. So, But you can see how players have been effective, centers have been effective specifically against the Spurs this season. Now, the Spurs, even last season, gave up the most points in the paint. And we see that ha that has continued into this season. They are allowing the most points in the paint in the NBA. Majority of Nurkic's points are going to come in the paint. 62 points in the paint per game they're allowing the most points in the paint in the nba we do love to see that they also don't have a great defensive rating fourth worst defensive rating in the nba as well which really helps a player who is so involved in the offense like joseph nurkic and then we look at this 6.3 potential assists per game along with 16.7 uh, rebounding chances per game so again nurkic he's gotten unlucky these first couple games mind you we know the potential that he has in this offense 24 pra and again and that was game one against golden state and that was with d book in the lineup um as well so we know nurkic could be effective he finished again like i said 24 12 and 11 he's gotten at least double digit pra in the first half in all three games last two games with crazy foul trouble i like him to bounce back in this one so here the two plays for this youtube video i kept this video a little longer um, i had a little bit of time in my hands i wanted to give it as in-depth as possible um again we've kind of missed we missed on sunday NFL, Roshan Johnson, you watch the videos, you know what happened with that one. And then yesterday, we hit on the Obi Toppin one, which was easily the more riskier one, right? 12 and a half PRA, he finished with like 18. I mean, 12 and a half PR, he finished with like 18. And then LaMelo Ball, I think debatably, like, let's actually look this up. Like, LaMelo Ball may have had, like, his worst game of his career. Like, let's just look this up for everyone. Game log at home. Like let's let's literally look this up together because this is crazy. He literally may have had his worst game of the year. 16 PA yesterday, 16, second worst game of his career debatably at home. 16 PA played only 22 minutes. So we're gonna live with that one. Uh, if you know ball, you live with those. So again, let me know in the comments below how you feel about these two plays. Drop a like on this video, hit the subscribe button, and as always, let's cash.